theme for 2023 is blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled praise god hallelujah and the subtopic of the message today is what are you hungry and thirsty for what are you hungry and thirsty for? Praise God. Hallelujah. And you know, we all have experienced hunger and thirst in the natural. You know, when you've had a long day at work and you just want to have something to eat quick, sometimes you might just go for a, a microwave meal or stop off and buy some chips. But you know, that's nice, but there's nothing like a home cooked meal. I'm sure Bishop would agree, you know, if I give him a microwave meal and I cook him rice and peas and chicken and curry goat, I know which one he would prefer to eat and it's the same in the spiritual you know we have to hunger and thirst after righteousness we have to hunger and thirst after what god wants us to have amen especially in today's society everything is a microwave society isn't it everything's got to be done now quick 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 we want things done how we want it to be done in a, as quick a way as possible but that's not how god wants it you know when you're going through your situations and your trials and your tribulations Sometimes you're in that, that situation for a while. It could be a week, it could be a month, it could be a year. God's not taking it through you quickly because he wants to teach you something. He wants to show you something. He wants you to hunger and thirst after him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So as we go through this message, I want to keep at the forefront of our minds. What is it that you are hungry and thirsting after in 2023? Praise God. Hallelujah. And the word righteousness, let me just give you a brief description. Righteousness means to be in right standing with God, to be in a relationship with Christ. So that means we are praying, we are worshipping, we are reading the Bible, we're living as God would want us to live. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm not saying that we're perfect. I've slipped up. We all slip up. Sometimes you don't you get up and you don't feel like praying. Sometimes you get up and you don't feel like reading the Bible because of something that's happened the previous day, something that's gone on at work. But brethren, let me encourage us this year. Let us have that hunger and thirst to pray more. God needs to hear from us more and more each day. So we need to pray. We need to read his word, know his word. If we don't take the word in, how can we apply it to our situations? If we don't know the Bible says he's our healer, how can we declare that word over our lives when we're ill if we don't know that he is our healer we need to worship when we worship we set ourselves free not just us but the people next to us paul and silas when they worship and praise in the prison they were in prison you know and they still hungered and thirsted after righteousness they still worshiped and when they did they set their fellow prisoners free so brethren righteousness is to be in a relationship with christ and christ is our righteousness so the minute we come into a relationship with christ christ covers us he covers us hallelujah with his righteousness first corinthians 1 30 says but of him are ye in christ jesus who of god is made unto wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption so christ is our righteousness there's nothing we can do of ourselves we can do all the good works do all the go out and feed people and look after people and do this and everything that is good but without christ's righteousness upon us it means nothing our works aren't going to get us into heaven it's our faith in christ that will get us into heaven praise god second corinthians 5 21 says for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of god in him praise god so as i said when we give our hearts to christ Christ covers us. He covers us with his righteousness. So yes, we sin. Yes, we slip up. Yes, we make mistakes. Hallelujah. And there's a wonderful scripture in Proverbs. It says, for a just or a righteous man falleth seven times, but he rises and gets up. But it is a wicked man that shall fall into mischief. So brethren, you are going to fall. I'm going to fall. Everybody in here is going to fall and slip up. But if we are covered with Christ's righteousness, God looks at that. He doesn't look at the sin. God is faithful and just to forgive us. So brethren, to hunger after Christ's righteousness is to hunger after what he has for us. To hunger for his word. To hunger to be closer to him. To hunger to know what is on his heart for us. Amen. And in Psalms 42 verse 1. As the heart panteth or as the deer panteth after the water brook. So panteth my soul after thee, O God. 
Now, it was the sons of Korah who robbed these. We don't know the background to it, but they were obviously going through a situation. And they used a deer as an example. Now, when a deer runs to the water, a deer runs to the water because it's thirsty, but it also runs to the water when it's in danger. Because once it gets into that water, the, the scent of the deer is lost to the enemy. The enemy can no longer smell that scent of the deer that it's looking for. And it's the same with us. When we are in trouble, if we run and we look and seek after that righteousness, we thirst after Christ. When that enemy is on our trail and we cover ourselves under Christ's righteousness, we become almost invisible to the enemy. And that's what the deer does. He went to the water to be quenched. Now, there's a story I want to take us through. And it's from Luke 14. And the backstory is that Jesus had been invited by a chief Pharisee. And we know the Pharisees didn't really like Jesus, but he went to supper with them at their house. And he was teaching them about humility and serving. And um, if they're at a, invited to a meal, rather than go up to the front, take a seat at the back. Then if the, the master of the house calls you forward, you go forward and take a higher seat. But he would also talk them about not just inviting your family and friends around. Also, have time for those who are in need, who are poor, not as well off as us. Yes, it's good to have family and friends around, but we have to remember there are people out there who are in need, especially in this current economic situation that we're going through, praise God. You can imagine Jesus sitting in there telling them this, these Pharisees who are so holy, who know everything, they probably didn't go down too well. In Luke 14, verse 14, it says, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just or of the righteous. So if we take time out to seek after those who are less fortunate than us and look after them and care for them, it's in the resurrection that we will get our reward. Amen. Whereas the Pharisees, they didn't see it like that. They saw it that they had to do things there and then. They had, whatever they did in the life that they were living they would be blessed. So then this Pharisee pipes up in verse 15. And when one of them sat at meat with him, heard these things, he said unto him, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. So this Pharisee hearing all that Jesus has said, he said, blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. So he was basically saying, I'm a Pharisee, I'm a Jew, I'm going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. He didn't really pay attention to what Christ had said. So on that now, Jesus gave them a parable. Verse 16, then said he unto him, Jesus said, a certain man made a great supper and bade many. So this man had invited many to come to this meal. And in those days, the invite was sent out in good time, a good few weeks or months before the actual meal was to be provided. So all the invitations had been sent out. And he sent his servant at supper time to say to them that had been invited, come, for all things are now ready. So he sent his servants to the ones who had been invited and said, come, the supper is now ready, come, let us sit down, let us eat, let us have what the master has provided. If you read from 18 to 24, you will see, they all began to make excuses. The first said, oh, I've got a piece of ground that I've just brought, I need to go and have a look at it and see how it's doing, excuse number one. Then the other one said, oh, I've just bought five yoke of oxen. I've got to go and check on them, prove them and see if they're worth what I brought them for. And then the third one said, oh, I've just married my wife. Therefore, I cannot come. Now, they've, they've had this invitation from a few months ago. They knew that this date was set. But at the last minute, they had these excuses. How many of us, and I'm including myself in this, how many of us have made excuses? Oh, I can't go to church today because I've been at work all week and I'm tired. Or I can't do this today because my family need me. Or I can't do this today because I haven't got the money. We have all said it, we've all done it. But what Christ wants us to do is be in a position where we hunger and thirst to be in his presence on a daily basis. He wants us to hunger and thirst to pray to him, to read his word, to know more of him. Hallelujah. God is just standing there. He's waiting for us to come to him. Hallelujah, to hunger and to thirst after him, not to make excuses day after day. And yes, I know people work on Sundays, people are ill and we understand you can't be here every week. But there has to be a time where we say, OK, yes, I've been at work. I work Monday to Friday. I'm blessed that I have Saturday and Sunday off. I give God thanks for the job that I have. And I know some of you don't have that privilege. 
but sometimes we have to just push our jobs aside and yes i'm tired sometimes i'm tired on a sunday morning i don't want to get up but you know what i know that when i come to the house of the lord i'm coming to worship him i'm coming to bless his holy name i'm coming to give god thanks for the week he's brought me through because i don't know what god has kept me from hallelujah i don't know when i've driven to work what accident he's diverted from me i don't know when i've been at work what could have happened to me but I'm coming to church on a Sunday to give God thanks for his mercy, for his grace, for his love, for his kindness. Hallelujah. So I'm encouraging everyone this year. I'm not saying you're going to be here every Sunday. But the thing God has laid on our hearts is that we need to have that hunger and thirst again. Brethren, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, we are in the last days. We are in the last days. Now is not the time to play church. Now is not the time to play Christian. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now is the time to be serious. Hallelujah. There's a scripture in Genesis 15. God was talking to Abraham and it says that his faith was counted to him as righteousness because Abraham put his faith in Christ. Now we can all stand up here and say, I believe there's a God. But it's different to say, I believe there's a God to say, I believe in God. I believe God can heal me. I believe God can provide for me. I believe God can deliver me. There's a difference. And that's what God is saying this year. We need to step up, basically. We need to have a shaking in our spirits, not the old of 2022. We need to have a yearning, a desire to be in God's presence, to be in God's presence at home when we're praying, to be in God's presence when we pick up the phone to encourage somebody, to be in God's presence when we're coming to church on a Sunday morning, to be in God's presence when we join Bible study on a Wednesday, and the different things that will take place throughout the year. But all God wants from us is for us to worship him. He just wants our worship. He doesn't want anything else. He just wants our worship. Hallelujah. And the fact that we're all sitting here this afternoon, that in itself is enough to give God worship. Now is the time to stop the excuses. Tell yourself, put your hand on yourself and say, no more excuses for 2023. No more excuses. These three people, they had their excuses. They knew that the meal was there. They knew what date had been set, but they decided not to go. Brethren, we can't afford to do that. We don't know when God is going to come. We don't know when that trumpet is going to sound. Are you ready? Are you ready to accept that invitation and meet Christ? Are you ready? These three people weren't. As you carry on reading through that story, the master who had invited them, he got angry. And he said to them, go out into the highways and the byways, calling all those who are lame, calling all those who are sick, those who are in need, those who are poor. Call them in. Call them in. They will come and sit and eat at this supper. And that's what his servant did. And he went and he called the first lot and there was still space. So he went back again and called more. And those were the ones who made it into supper. And if you relate that to the spiritual, he's talking about the marriage supper. Praise God. The master is God in this story. And it's for us to accept that invitation. Are you hungry and thirsty for God this afternoon, brethren? Those on YouTube, are you hungry and thirsty for God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not just about coming to church on a Sunday morning and sitting and worshipping and listening to the songs and listening to the sermon. It's about what God has put in you, what God wants to draw out of you in 2023. But if you're not hungering and thirsting and yearning after God, you're not going to want to give anything back. You're just going to come and it's just going to be almost a ritual of coming to church on a Sunday. God wants more from each of our lives this year. He wants more. He wants us to hunger and thirst after him so much, hallelujah, that whatever he calls us to do, no matter how hard or difficult it may be, that we will be obedient to the voice of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. The woman at the well. This woman was a woman that had been married to five husbands. She was a Samarian. She shouldn't really have been speaking to Jesus. Jesus shouldn't be speaking to her because of the custom of the day. But she went to the well to draw her water, as she would have done on a daily basis, because we need water to survive. We can't go through a day without drinking water or some kind of drink. So she went to the well to draw her water. And Jesus met her there. And they were talking and they were having a conversation. And Jesus said to her in John 4, 13, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. So you can drink of this 
of normal water or drink. But you're going to be thirsty again the next day and the next day and the next day. And that's only natural. You have to drink, you have to eat. But in verse 14, it says, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. So what Christ was offering her was something that would last forever, 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 into eternity. Brethren, that is what Christ has for you here today. If there's any of you that is going through a situation where you don't know how you're going to get through it, where you've said to yourself, well, God, I've been going through this financial problem for weeks and months and years. I've been going through this relationship problem. I've been going through this job problem. And I don't know how I'm going to get through it. God is saying, I have the water. If you just come and drink of me, if you just come and put your trust in me, hallelujah, you will never thirst again. Yes, you may still be going through your problem, but you, I can assure you that God will see you through to the end. I can assure you that God will bring the solution to your problem if you just put your trust in him. And then in verse 15, it said, The woman said unto Jesus, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. So she recognised that what Jesus had to offer was something that she wanted, something that she needed. We all need to drink from the living water that Christ has to offer us, brethren. And she recognised it and she took that living water, praise God. And on that, she went back to her hometown and says, come, see a man. Brethren, we need to go out there and say, come, come see a man who has solved my problems. Come see a man who has healed me. Come see a man who has delivered me. Come see a man who has provided for me. Hallelujah. Come see a man who has turned the situation around. Come see a man who has brought healing to a relationship, who has restored relationships. Hallelujah. And that was all because she accepted the invitation to drink of the everlasting water. Hallelujah. Brethren. Let us drink from that everlasting water that Christ has on offer for us today. Because if we don't, like those people who made their excuses, we're going to end up in a place that we don't want to be in eternity. I know where I want to make it. I want to make it into heaven. I want to make it into heaven. I don't want to be up there and God has said, well, you made this excuse and you made that excuse and you didn't do this and you didn't do that. I want God to say, well done, my faithful servant. You have made it in. Brethren, that is what we want for each and every one of you today. Hence the theme, hunger and thirst after righteousness and you shall be filled. Let's not make 2023 the same old, same old. Let us do something different. Let us begin to pray and seek the face of God more and more each day. And you know, the more you speak to God is the more you know him. I've been married to Bishop for 30 years this year in May. And over the years... We talk, we have conversations, and the more we speak, even now, the more we get to know each other, the more we understand each other. And that's what it's like with Christ. When we pray, when we take time to pray and we see God's face and we read his word, we begin to know who God is. We begin to know what he wants for our lives. We begin to know what his desire and his will is for us. But brethren, we can only do that if we have a hunger and thirst. I cannot drag anybody here by their hair and say you're going to come to church every Sunday you're going to sit there and you're going to worship and you're going to pray and you I can't do that because that's I'm forcing you to do it you have to have that desire within you that desire within you to want to be here to want to worship and it's important that we do it in person yes God bless all of those who are on YouTube and also can't be here because of sickness and because of distance but I'm encouraging you this year if you can be in the house of God come out on Sunday morning to be with the fellow brethren in the house, hallelujah, to fellowship together because that's what the Bible is encourages us to do. Don't let YouTube become an easy option. Don't let YouTube become an excuse. Oh, it's on YouTube, so I'll stop home today because I'm still going to get my blessing. Praise God, yes, you might do, but being in the house of God, it's different. You're in that atmosphere. So I encourage you just to come out and just to hunger and thirst after Christ's righteousness this year, praise God, in the name of Jesus. And when you do that, the last part of Matthew 5, 6 says, and you shall be filled. You shall be filled. If you hunger and thirst after Christ, after all that he has on offer for you, you shall be filled. And that word filled means to be completely satisfied. You know, when you've had a full meal, you've had your starters, 
your mains and your dessert, a nice drink, you're full. So full that you can't move. That's what Christ wants for us spiritually. He wants us to hunger and thirst after his righteousness. That spiritually we are filled. And you know what happens when we are filled? We are then able to sow seeds into other people's lives. We're able to encourage other people. We're able to spend time to pray with other people. Because God has filled us, we have so much more to pour out to other people. Amen? Hallelujah. Like the woman with the jars, and she had a little bit of oil. And Elisha prayed, and then the oil, she kept pouring the oil, pouring the oil into all these vessels. That's what Christ wants to do with us. If we hunger and thirst after him, he wants to fill us. So this year, brethren, I encourage you. I encourage you hunger and thirst after Christ's righteousness because if you do you will be blessed and you will be filled you'll be satisfied praise God Proverbs 12 28 says in the way of righteousness is life and in the pathway thereof there is no death so if we walk in the way of righteousness there's life so if you're going through dire straits but if you just walk in that path of righteousness if you're hunger and thirst after righteousness you will find life you will find healing you will find deliverance and it says there will be no death no matter how hard things get hallelujah if we just walk in that path of righteousness the end goal is that we will have eternal life so brethren whatever you do this year put god first Matthew 6, 33 says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. So if you want a job this year, if you want to open a business this year, if you want your relationship to get better this year, if you need a financial breakthrough, whatever it is you need, write that down on a piece of paper, whatever it is, but under it put that you will seek after his kingdom first. If you seek and hunger after God first, all other things shall be added unto you praise god hallelujah so i encourage you brethren no matter how dark your situation may seem whatever may have carried on from 2022 into 2023 it doesn't have to remain the same it's for us to get up to stand up to make a change in our lives by hungering and thirsting after christ because christ only has good things in store for us he doesn't have anything bad god doesn't want to give us anything that's going to harm us he doesn't want to give us anything that's going to hold us back yes you're going to go through situations that god will allow you to go through but only because he needs to do something in you he needs to shape you he needs to mold you he needs to make you into the person he needs you to be in 2023 so brethren as david did in psalm 63 verse 1 he says oh god thou art my god early will i seek thee my soul thirsts for thee my flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water to see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. David was going through a hard time in this scripture. They believe it was either when he was running away from Absalom or Saul, and he was, they were after his life, basically. They wanted to kill him. But David knew, he said, my God, early will I seek thee. I will get up, I will pray, I will seek your face. My soul is thirsty for thee in a dry and thirsty land if you're in a wilderness period right now where you don't know where your help is coming from where you don't know where your deliverance is coming from put your trust in god as david did seek after god thirst after god thirst after his righteousness and god is the one who will deliver you continue to put your trust in god continue to hunger and thirst after christ's righteousness and you shall be filled in jesus name